Vault 96 will open doors soon with a brand new layout. Meanwhile, servers have been really, really unstable and new error messages and heavy bugs have been detected. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Unfortunately, I don't bring a lot of great news today, apart from Vault 96, which is a brand new location about to go live with the next update, I have a fair amount of issues to show you in this one. A few days ago, 76 servers were down shortly and some strange new error messages have been detected. To be honest with you, servers have been really, really unstable lately, more than usual, which is probably why they are generating other sorts of issues, which used to be rare before. Anyway, the Vault Tech University is now bugged with update 25, and there is a new bug that can randomly kick you off instances and teams. Meanwhile, destroying frag mines in VATS mode might auto-close your game, and the Path of Enlightenment event is not working as intended anymore. Well, with that being said, let's get into the details. As usual, good news first, and there is a new location coming live soon. Vault 96 has been part of the game files pretty much since the release days, but it has been closed for whatever reason. You can actually get inside using glitches, but Bethesda has recently announced that Vault 96 will be part of the new Daily Ops locations, and curious enough, not a lot of people seem to be talking about this. Anyway, this vault is not going to be open for exploration through the open world. The vault door will remain closed as it is now. The only way to access 96 will be through daily ops whenever the system selects this location for the daily operation, as the community manager explained already. This is certainly a strange system. The only location that works this way is Vault 51 because there is a dedicated mode using it, Nuclear Winter. The reason why 96 is going to follow this same logic is beyond me. My best guess is that maybe this vault will be used for upcoming missions and lore in a future DLC. Anyway, I want to give you a short sneak peek inside Vault 96. I'm not sure if Bethesda has been renovating the place, but it's quite unlikely. There are weeks of work inside this vault, to say the least. It's huge, it has new items, new effects, new assets, and nothing of this is necessarily new. Most footage on social media of 96 is years old by now, just to be clear. This vault has been complete for years with a very unique layout. It's like a frozen palace filled with cryotechnology inside with cryotanks, cryopods, and lots of terminals, control panels, and all sorts of research tech, as you can see. Besides that, there are also living rooms, as typically of every large vault, such as bedrooms, toilets, a kitchen, and office rooms, too. There's even some sort of open cave and a military storage room with lots of goodies inside, such as weapons, explosives, and ammo. In the end, it's just another massive vault like 94 or even 79. I also spotted a few terminals with lore, but I won't spoil you here. No, no, no. Anyway, all of this could still change by the time this vault goes live. I don't think it will. It would require a lot of work, but we don't know if Bethesda has been changing the place or not. Once the PTS reopens next week, we will surely find out and get more answers regarding this new old location. Just to let you know. Now, let's move on to recent events. On January 29 or 30, depending on your time zone, the Fallout 76 servers were really unstable and eventually crashed. They went down for a short period. As a result, players could start the game, but they couldn't connect to any server, not even private worlds. As far as I know, only the client was online. There are dozens of reports all over social media, as shown here, and Bethesda was quick to address the situation. Volsic was answering players on the forums and over Reddit. He started by saying the team was actively investigating the reports, and later on he confirmed the situation was resolved and servers were back online. 
and players who were connecting to servers as per usual. As far as I know, since I was not online when this happened, the issue only lasted about one hour, so it was a very short service interruption. Moreover, it's not known what caused the downtime. Nevertheless, I think this episode speaks for itself. I mean, the servers have been really unstable for months, and nothing much has been done ever since. So if servers start to randomly crash, shut down every now and then, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's hope it doesn't happen, but it's quite likely. Talking about servers struggling, it really feels hopeless to try and bring awareness into the matter at this point. There are hundreds of reports about servers struggling just from the past few months alone. Now, I know on console things are a bit better, but on PC it can easily turn into a nightmare. It's like day and night. In some servers you hardly find issues or any bugs, then in other servers you get everything, from heat delay to shuttering, rubber banding, bugs in sequences, even mass player kicks. It's really strange. I have lots of footage and proof as you can see. I am adding it here to this point as I speak, but I don't want to bore you to death with old news. Overall, in my experience, I feel like some servers are just overloading massively, and as a result, they take ages to load everything. That's why enemies can get stuck inside the terrain, camps take ages to fully load, and even the queen loot can take a minute to appear on her body. Just a few examples. Oh, and let's not talk about melee hits. Sometimes it's unplayable with such weapons. Your hits will just miss everything for no reason. I hope we get to see better days before the next DLC, or things are evidently going to get worse. It's a matter of logic. Following the same topic, I have a recent news about game crashes resulting from your survival tent or camp not being able to load once you join a new server because another player already has their items placed in the same location. This is a rather common thing to happen, but before, you could just carry on without such assets in that same server or move to another server with no problems. Now, it seems like players can get a game freeze whenever their camps or tents are not able to spawn, which is quite strange. I mean, it worked fine for years, why did it suddenly stop working? Wait, I think I know the answer, but I will keep it to myself. Anyway, if something similar happens to you, keep in mind you are not alone. Let's proceed. Well, 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 I'm proud to report I discovered this issue myself. I wish I didn't, but since I haven't seen it anywhere else at all, I guess I'm the first one, maybe. I, I, it doesn't matter. A few days ago, I was doing daily ops and finished my dailies for score. I was not even recording, assuming I would take 30 minutes and log off, but guess what? Things didn't go as planned. I came across this new error message telling me something went wrong while confirming a new teammate and it kicked me off daily ops. Yeah, it just fast traveled me outside. How rude. Anyway, this happened exactly when a teammate joined the team and then joined daily ops. Thankfully, it was in time for me to join back and get my rewards, but still, what an inconvenient bug. Now, someone else told me they got this bug some days ago as well with the same exact error message, but instead of getting kicked out of any instance, he got kicked from the public team he was part of. He was even the team leader. So, I do believe this is a team or public team related bug that really needs to be fixed. Otherwise, random kicks and instance boots are deemed to happen. Another new bug I have to report is not a very severe one, at least there is a counter for it. It's about the vault University. Ever since Update 25 went live, you can no longer get inside the building. While trying to get inside, you will get this new error message saying your team leader is not connected when that's not true, and there is no option to join solo at the door, just like most buildings. Thankfully, there is a way to bypass this new bug, 
right now by simply leaving the team you are part of. I know it's inconvenient and it shouldn't be this way, but at least you can get inside the building if you really need to. Not being part of any team is the only solution to get inside for the time being. But as I already said, they are looking into the matter, so you should expect the fix to come with the next update. Until then, you should use this trick to bypass the issue and get inside if you need to. Next, we have another bug, you guessed right, which is not exactly new. It's about the fact that power armor frames cannot be added to the quick or favorites bar. I hardly use mine, so to be honest with you, I never noticed this fact or rule, but it's there for a long time. Recently, someone made a post about this strange fact and a community manager answered saying she is not sure this rule is intended, so she will bring this matter into the table to be discussed. I also don't think it's intended, it's most likely another bug. I mean, you can add almost anything to your favorites bar, even cosmetics, so why not your power armor as well, which is part of your gear collection and should be able to get easy access just like any other armor or weapon. This one should get fixed at some point too, hopefully. Alright, about a week ago, someone told me about a very concerning bug that can easily crash your game. It includes explosives, a VATS mode and shotguns. These three elements are the perfect recipe for your game to auto-close. No joke. I decided to test with over a hundred frag mines and my conclusion is that there is a high chance to crash if you destroy a mine using VATS mode with a shotgun, combat or gauss, both seem to trigger this bug. Now the strange thing here is that sometimes the game closed right after I destroyed the mine, that's the most common bug, but it can also happen right before the mine exploded or a bit after it got destroyed. Only one time it auto-closed when I selected the mine without shooting. Of course, it doesn't always happen. I would say there is about a 20 to 25% chance. I ended up with 8 crashes in total after killing about 100 mines and I used other weapon types in my tests as well. So far, no other weapon was able to trigger this bug which proves this is not any sort of effect crash from the explosion, you know, some sort of graphic Call issue. The fact that I got a crash while just selecting the mine proves that. Anyway, you might be wondering why is this bug concerning in my view? Well, there are plenty of enemies who throw explosives and if you end up targeting them and destroying them using VATS, your game might just crash, just like it happened to me here while doing daily ops. I almost missed my rewards there and that's no fun. And before you say my game is broken, it's my issue, no, it's not. There are many other reports around, I even had another content creator saying she is experiencing the same with her gauss shotgun, so it's definitely not just me. Well, at least the bug doesn't seem to trigger with other weapons, so that's a good thing to know. It's basically with these three ingredients, the shotguns, in VATS modes, and while selecting or most likely hitting, destroying the frag mines. I think it works with grenades as well, but the easiest way to test is with the mines, so that's what I did. So keep that in mind, when you see an enemy throwing stuff at you, make sure not to use VATS or you might crash. And you probably don't want to crash, especially if you are doing daily ops. Lastly, I want to quickly talk about the Path of Enlightenment event, which is not working as intended these days. Well, during the event things run smoothly, but once you complete it, the wise Mutman doesn't really descend from the skies as he is supposed to. I've seen this bug at least three times in the past weeks, and it's quite frustrating. On the other hand, there is a way to counter this bug. In my last bug, I decided to head to the top of the lighthouse, I got inside power armor and then I jumped and commuted with the Mothman mid-air and guess what? It works. I got the buff and it unbugged itself. The NPC descended with me and other players could finally get the 5% experience buff from him as well. So next time you come across a bugged wise mod man like this, 
just go up there, use your power armor, commute with him, and everything should return back to normal. Hey, gotta love these soft bugs with possible counteractions. At least you can go around and still get or do things the way it's supposed to be. To finish off, let me introduce you to the Slenderman version 10.0. I've never seen such a disturbing version in first hand. His body looked like a 2D paint with bended limbs and his head was, well, missing, kinda. On top of his neck, mildly disturbing, huh? The fun fact here is that the community manager reached out to my post over Twitter and it seems like Bethesda is trying to replicate this sort of bug. As far as I know, it's related to power armor. This player was trying out power armors when I first saw him. What happened next is beyond me. I guess the servers don't always render people properly when they enter or exit power armor, or I'm not entirely sure. On the good side, he was still blinking, so don't worry everyone, that guy is absolutely fine, one way or the other. Anyway, that's everything for this one, I hope I could keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. I am Marta Branco, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content to let YouTube know. And well, that's it for now, a special thanks to all my supporters, you guys are amazing and I will see you all very very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!